Hey, welcome back to another episode of Pickleball Tech. Today, we are going to be looking at past, present, and future rule changes. Um, you know, it's it's kind of my opinion as the sport of pickleball evolves, being the fastest growing sport in the world right now, I think it is important to let the um, rules kind of evolve, rules and regulations evolve, and move forward at an equal pace that the sport is growing. Um, for instance, in 2021, we saw some major rule changes, such as the drop serve being allowed. Smoking! In 2022, we saw no chainsaw serve. Stop! Right. Stop! No, no ear buds. And you had better watch your mouth. Period. End of discussion. Looking into 2023, we're going to have a peek at some of the proposed rule changes and see what may be in store for pickleball in 2023. So let's get right into it. This is on the USA Pickleball uh, website. Anybody can go look at it. Um, excellent resource for what's going on in the world of pickleball. Um, I highly recommend joining it. I have uh, become a member as myself some time ago. And let's take a look at the process of um, rule book revisions. So the USA Pickleball Member Input Opportunity, which is wonderful. I think that is one of the best resources at our fingertips that we can um, tap into. The window for the USA Pickleball Member Input and Comments for Proposed Rule Changes is now open and will end on June 30th. So it has already ended because the down here it will tell us that the, um, the Rules Committee finishes rule writing by September 15th. So... They got from the end of June till September 15th to implement any rule changes. So let's look at some proposed rule changes for 2023. So this is the uh, existing rule number. You can also search a rule. Let's say we want to look at, is there going to be any changes to serve? All right, serving, serving. Look at all the rule. One-handed pre-spin serves. Let's look at that one. Got it! <laughs> so here's the existing rule number. They didn't know the rule number, so they didn't put it in. Um, the proposed rule change says, ban the one-handed pre-spin serve at all levels of professional and amateur tournament play. This would be similar to last year's ban on the two-handed pre-spin serve. This would also be similar to this year's ban of the one-handed pre-spin serve by the Professional Pickleball Association. They state the reason uh, when executed properly, the pre-spin serve leads to a large percentage of missed returns and weak returns. This often sharply reduces the number of interesting rallies and point developments that have made pickleball successful in recent years. Now, I will agree with that. Um, we watch pickleball and we play pickleball for the um, excellent competition, the rallies, the back and forth, the volleys, and all that stuff. So I kind of see that point. Um, the reasoning he says is the, or she says is the same as used to ban the two-handed pre-spin serve. Some players are now mastering the one-handed pre-spin serve to the degree of having a similar impact as the two-handed pre-spin serve. That is true. If you search on YouTube, you can find dozens, if not hundreds, of uh, people doing instructional videos on the one-handed uh, pre-spin serve. Basically, you're putting the ball between your fingers and snapping, giving it a snapping motion, and it puts a pre-spin on the ball. And then when you hit it in that same direction as it goes over, it bounces left or right depending on the spin you put on it. <laughs> um, I'm not sure if I agree with that. Um, I, th I think if you can spin the ball with one hand, I mean, that's going to, to me, that that's going to lead to just being too strict. But if you can spin it with one hand and hit it and induce spin that makes the ball jump when it hits the ground, I say good on you. All right, let's go back and uh, see if we can see another one. This one says, serving section 4A and 4C, rule change 320. Let's have a look. All right, original rule text. Serving. The entire score must be called before the ball is served. Okay, we all know that. Proposed rule change. Number one, hold the ball overhead before serving. 
I don't know about that. I disagree with that. I hold the ball up and show my receiving team the ball, and I say the score loudly enough for people to hear it. I call the score. I hold the ball up. I don't think over the head is really necessary. Uh, number two, he says, or she says, call out the score loudly, slowly, and clearly. I'll go with that. Um, I would just say loudly, loud and clear. Um, announce the score twice. Not necessary. Do not believe that is necessary. Original rule says uh, the entire score must be called before the ball is served. You know, that very well could be sufficient. And um, without putting too much restrictions on everything, I mean, everything that we, all these rules, you can really slow the gameplay down a lot. Um, if we bog it down with too much stuff, hold the ball overhead. Loudly, slowly, and clearly call out the score. Announce the score twice. I don't think so. I will. Uh, I think I would stick with the uh, entire score must be called before the ball is served. I think that's sufficient. What do you all think? Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are. All lines in. Let's see what that says. Proposed rule change. Existing rule is 6A. If a ball hits a line, it's in play. This includes the line marking the non-volley zone. A serve ball that clears... I thought that was already a rule. A serve ball that clears the non-volley zone and lands in the correct service court or any correct service court line is in. Yeah, I get it. Reasoning, let's look at his reasoning. This is the rule now for all lines except the non-volley line and that only on and and that's only on serves there's no obvious reason why that one line should be an exemption i think it is obvious well maybe not i don't know we'll see if it weren't an exception the rules would be simpler and easier to explain to beginners like the rule change about let serves being good yeah i i don't agree totally agree with the let serve being a good serve um not should be not just because it's burned me a couple times but i don't know I, I i'm not sure about the rule in volleyball i know in ping pong um the let serve i think is not good but um you know it, it it happens so rarely that i don't think it really matters all right let's move on we'll do one more in the serve single toss serve that one sounds interesting 4m is the existing rule Proposed rule changes, it's an additional rule versus a change of rule. Proposed changes, the server has only one attempt to toss the serve. Once the ball leaves the server's toss hand, the serve must be completed. Failure to serve the ball will result in a fault. Sorry, but I don't agree with that one either. Um, if I throw the ball and it, if I'm doing a bounce serve and I drop it and it doesn't bounce the way I want it to, if it hits a dead spot, um, I think I should be able to bounce it again. I did not take an honest attempt by swinging the paddle at the ball. I dropped it. It didn't bounce the way I wanted it, or I threw it, and it landed too close to my body, too far from my body. I let it bounce, catch it, and begin my serve again. I believe that is not a, um, not a real good rule suggestion. All right, let's move on to the players section on page one. Let's Let's see what that is. Oh, guidance on clothing color. This should be interesting. Players avoid wearing clothing that closely matches the ball color. Not agreeing with that. I think um, you can pretty much wear whatever color clothing you would choose to. I can see where it would be tough, maybe in the in the right spot if it caught the, um, you know, blended in with the shirt or shorts. Um, let's look at the comments on this one. Okay, Mr. Walt says... I agree that clothing can be a distraction and can mask the ball, which limits the amount of time opponent can have to react. I don't think TDs should be responsible for policing clothing colors for tournaments. All right, what does Dennis say? If we become concerned with being able to see the ball at all times for safety reasons, are we then going to write a rule that states a player may not hit a ball into the sun so that his opponent cannot see it? Fair point. JD says, uh, this rule is not needed. I tend to agree with JD. 
The reference to the color of clothing should be removed from the rule book completely. There we go. Uh, Michael, change the rule that TDs can ask a player to change based on color alone. Yeah, I think that's a kind of a weird area. That's a tough one. All right, what's let's some big stuff. Let's find a big one. Something important. Line call rules. I know that's a uh, point of contention for a lot of people, so we're going to look at this one. Existing rule 6 delta 9. 6 d9. Proposed rule 69 revision. All right, he says in doubles play, if one player calls the ball out and the partner calls it in, then doubt exists and the team's call will be in. So he's saying if one player calls it out and the other player calls it in, then the in call will overrule, will take Trump over all other calls. If a player makes an out call, the opposing team may ask if the player's partner was able to see the ball clearly enough to render an opinion. If the player's partner either confirms the out call or was unable to see the ball, clearly the original call stands. If the player's partner disagrees with the original out call, the team's call will be in. However, any player may appeal a call to the referee. If the referee did not clearly see the ball, the original call stands. <laughs> Nice. Oh, short. It was short. That was in. Not cheating, dude, for real. Yeah. It's not what cheating. was it, right? I thought it was short. Well, you're wrong. It was not that short. ball was like this short. No, it was not. Here, I'll bet you $100 right now. Watch that camera. You can't see that. Especially in pro tournaments, I was, you know, when I'm watching them, I always wonder, um, are we going to get to a point like we are in tennis with the camera shot of the ball on the line or not on the line? Are we going to have line judges? on all four corners um that might not be a bad idea line judges for pro matches i mean amateur stuff you got to handle your business and um i'm not sure if this is really needed um the courtesy in pickleball that i have found is wonderful and nobody's trying to argue about a call or second guess a call if you're in a tournament that's a different story every point counts so I can see some need for uh, line judges and instant replays. Are we getting there? I don't know. There was one other here, game ball selection. i dying to see what that one says. The player or team that serves first in a match shall choose the game ball. The ball shall not be replaced during the match except as permitted by Rule 11 Echo, 11E. I don't think that rule needs to change. It's pretty easy all right i gotta do one more use the word out during a volley ay 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 so the existing rule is 6d 1.1 while the ball is in the air if a player oh this is the proposed change while the ball is in the air if a player yells out whether or not the ball is in the air or has already landed play stops but if the ball lands in then the team that incorrectly called out loses the volley well, it landed in anyway. They lost They lost it anyway. Players may yell any other word to communicate to their partner that they believe the ball may be out. While the ball is in the air, if a player yells out, okay, if I'm yelling out, I'm talking to my partner. I'm not making an official call. And it's happened to me before. I'll say out, and it ends up in. I'll say, no, that was good. No harm, no foul. Yeah, that's a silly one. Hey guys, anyway, I want to thank you for stopping in today and um, let me know in the comments below if you have any ideas for rule changes, uh, what you think needs changed, and if you if you knew about the USA Pickleball um, process for changing rules, um, if you haven't seen it before, go check it out on USA Pickleball. Excellent resource. I highly recommend joining USA Pickleball. You can find all your tournaments and things like that in your area. Um, appreciate y'all stopping in. I'm glad you made it today. Thanks a lot. Till next time. Take the ball.